It is time to get real about your pet's weight. It's so easy to overfeed your dog, your cat, and many of us do it without thinking about the detrimental health effects, which could eventually lead to obesity. Joining us now is Chris Unthank, renowned dog trainer and animal behaviorist. Good morning, Chris. Who is that gorgeous, who's that gorgeous critter you have with you? Well, this is my dog, Dave, who during the pandemic got a little bit heavy himself. So I'd uh, love to talk to you guys about this and what we can do here. We're here at Dog on Spine at our our pool. I, I love it. I love it. Chris, I want to get to all of that later. But first, yesterday was uh, Pet Obesity Awareness Day. How big of a problem is pet obesity? You know, it is a, it's a bigger problem than many of us think. You know, there's uh, more than half of all dogs are overweight uh, in the United States. Half of all pets. So that's a hundred million pets that are overweight here in the United States. So it's a bigger problem than we think. You know, you're showing uh, some dogs like the pugs and the, and the, and the, the bull masses and the, and the, and the uh, English, you know, uh, some, of the, some of the larger breeds, the smaller breeds. These dogs also have a problem. So it's really a big problem. But and how are, but how, Chris, food. how are pet owners, how are pet owners contributing to this problem? Because yes, we, we, well, we did, sh we did yeah. show pictures of some portly fellas in there. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of people are doing what we call emotional feeding and, and, and they're, they're, they're saying, oh, you look so cute. And, you know, even my kids are feeding Dave all the time these days because they're home and not in schools. Um, so, you know, they're, they're doing, they're treating them all the time. They're leaving the food down all the time. So it's better to pick it up and they're not measuring the amount of food that they give their dog. So there's lots of not enough exercise. And I, and I wonder, you know, in, and in full disclosure, I am not a pet mom or a pet parent, but what are the signs uh, that your dog or cat or cat or dog is overweight? How can you tell uh, that your, your pet is the ideal weight? Well, so you should be able to easily feel the first two ribs on your dog. Oh. And then if you go to the rear of the dog, right where my hand is, you should be able to feel easily those two hip bones on its rear end. If you're constantly increasing the size of the, the width of the collar, um, I just, then that's a sign also that your dog is probably gaining a bit of weight and we should take some weight off of our dog. That's pretty interesting. I never thought to feel the bone structure of, of your dog to see if, if he or she is at the ideal weight. Now, you have this beautiful pool behind you. Uh, swimming for dogs, is that a thing? Well, you know, it is here dog on Spark because it's not a weight bearing exercise. Um, this dog, Charlotte, was a border collie that's swimming in there with, with our swim trainer, Jordan. And, you know, we're swimming dogs all the time here for, for health reasons. Um, it's not weight bearing and you get a lot of bang for your buck when we're swimming. So here dog on Spark, we're swimming dogs all the time. But if, you know, there, there's places that you can swim your dogs um, in, in the city and around, and you also want to get those do as much sort of interactive exercise as possible, whether it's throwing a ball or playing tub or taking them on a nice hike. So there's lots of things we can do to, to really exercise our dogs. I, I love this, and Chris, I don't know if you can see this, but we're showing video of dogs jumping into a swimming pool. I could watch this all day day long. I love that you have a border collie, by the way, in the pool, because this is actually a question for me. I have a niece who is a border collie and she hates the water and she's overweight. What are we going to do about poor Margie? <laughs> well, so the thing is, is that, you know, not all dogs naturally know how to swim. We have to teach dogs how to swim. Charlotte didn't know how to swim when she first got here either, um, but we did swim lessons. So, you know, finding a, a facility that maybe has a pool, and I know they're uh, around the metropolitan area, um, is a great, great thing. But you know, taking your dog um, on, on more walks um, and taking your, doing interactive, there's also treat dispensers where you can stick their food in a treat dispenser and they have to work for it constantly throughout the day. That's a great thing and it's a lot of uh, mental stimulation as well. That's what I do with my two children. I put their broccoli <laughs> in a treat and I make them work for it. Chris, thank you so much for these wonderful well, tips. Love your pooches, and if you'd like to hear more from Chris, head over to doggonesmart.com.